Hey there, it's Jenny from Southern Savers. I'm glad to have you guys join me tonight. Um, we are quickly getting folks in bed and hopping on a couple minutes late, so thanks for your patience. Um, we are gonna talk budgeting tonight. That's what someone emailed, and I confess I meant to go and look up your name again, so apologize for forgetting who it was that asked. Um, but I'm always open to any topics that you want, so email me if you'd like us to cover something. and. We haven't covered it recently, or we've never covered it. That's okay, we can always cover something new. Um, we have covered budgeting in the past, but I took lots of just kind of detailing out so I didn't skip over something. So this might be more detailed than the first budgeting session that we did. Uh, and I'm also fine with going anywhere that you have questions. So if you're new, you can uh, click the little plus sign down the bottom corner and you can enter any questions you have in the chat window. Lots of folks will get to answer your questions before I do sometimes, which is the fun part about these Hangouts, um, but I will get there as well. Uh, and we'll just go for an hour with either what I have prepared or your questions. Um, we usually wrap up right about 9.30. Um, so if you're new, that's how this works. If you can't stay the whole time, this is saved on the Southern Savers YouTube page, so you can always watch later. Um, that's the basics, I guess. Um, meat and potatoes of how all this works anyway. Um, so let's dive in to budgeting basics while some of you guys enter your questions and then I'll jump back and forth as we go through. Um, so the first steps of a budget are that we have to figure out income and expenses. And first on income, what I want you to do, you need to map out anything that's coming in. Obviously, you know, salaries and whatnot make it easy, but for folks that maybe work for themselves, this can get a little harder figuring out um, where are, are the revenue sources coming from? Are they recurring revenue sources? Can I actually count them as income? Or are they more like one-time windfall sums? I can't really count that in if it doesn't happen recurringly or it's not something that I can semi expect. Um, so when we say income, I mean, I want you to look at what is every month kind of where we are. And a lot of folks will also say that I'm working, when I'm working on a budget, I need to work on last month's income or even last year's income as a total number versus what I expect next month to be. I don't wanna work on future numbers, I wanna work on past numbers because past numbers are real, past numbers happened um, versus future numbers, which is me saying, well, I hope we won't eat out at all for the next month, but that doesn't really happen. And I'm gonna make some examples here um, about our budgets versus the government budget, which is because, and I, I'm not getting into politics, but really because it's a budget that we all hear about all the time. You're gonna hear a ton about it in the next week as they are in, again, another budget crisis. But that's the difference between our budget and the government budget. We're not making a budget for next year based on projected income, based on all sorts of things. That doesn't work. And they show us that it doesn't work every single year. It cannot work. Our budgets need to be focused on what did I make last year and if nothing has changed, I haven't lost that job, I'm still in the same job, then I need to focus on how do I live on last month or last year's money in a sense. So when I look at in income versus expenses, I'm not gonna sit there and buy another car hoping that I'm gonna cover that cost. That's not how a budget works. That's not the concept here. So starting with income and expenses, we've figured out what did I make last month or what did I make last year. We've got that kind of figured out as to how that's going to look month by month in our budget. So we know what's coming in. Now we need to figure out what's going out. Uh, we want to start with large expenses that are recurring. I know I have to pay them their bills. So we're not starting with this is my eating out budget and this is my clothing budget. We're starting with the electricity, the water, the cable if you have it, whatever your bills are that are recurring bills. I can't not pay them. Um, you can not pay the cable bill, by the way. You don't have to have that one. Just so we've hit that. Every time I talk budgeting, I have to hit that. Um, but electricity, water, we can't go without some basics. Insurance um, for your cars and your house. So we've got all of those items figured out. Don't forget about yearly bills. When I mention insurance, a lot of folks don't pay that monthly. It's kind of a bad idea to pay it monthly because most of them charge you more. 
Um, so don't forget about those bills that you pay twice a year or once a year. We want to get all those on the table. And we want to assign a spot in our budget to where it appears that we're paying them monthly. Um, so one of my personal tips with budgeting is that I would recommend that you get not only your normal checking account and savings account at your local bank, but I would actually encourage you to look at getting a savings account that's an online savings account with whoever you want. We use Capital One. Um, my parents use Ing. Everybody has, or I guess Ing is now owned by Capital One, but that's where they started. Um, the reason for that is that I want you, this is what we do, and it's really, really helped, and it help, a lot of folks will recommend this as well, take those bills that aren't monthly, that are every six months or once a year, but let's make monthly payments, in a sense, for those bills into those online savings accounts. So I may not make my car insurance payment every single month, but I still have automatically deducted, use bill pay, take it out without even having to write the check or think about it. It's automatically deducted, going straight to that savings account so that you're good. That money is there. When the car insurance bill comes due, money is in that account. And so for us, we have an account that holds all, any long-term bill. So house insurance, car insurance, um, taxes on cars and house. We don't have that escrowed. So this is basically our escrow account for any long-term bills. Those bills aren't changing. Those bills aren't going to shock you unless your county does something horrific in terms of your property taxes. Um, I, can, I can do a pretty good job of saying, okay, I need to put in $150 a month so that when all these bills that are paid out of this account are due, then that account has all the money that it needs to have in it. But it's no longer in my checking account. I need to get it out of my checking account because so many of us are balance focused. And if you just leave this money that is assigned to a recurring big bill, uh, we're not talking like 20 bucks here. Car insurance, when it comes due, can be, you know, depending on the car you have, be five, 600 bucks. Um, that's not just a little tiny chunk of change that I can find if I screwed up and I spent it. And that's the problem with leaving it in your checking account is you're going to check your balance and you're going to say, oh, we've got $1,000 in the checking account. Yes, we can go out to dinner this weekend. No, you can't. If that $1,000, if half of it's there to pay the car insurance premium that's coming due next month, I don't really have $1,000. So this way that money is in a separate account. It isn't even money that we consider in, you know, money that we could spend. It's not local. It's not just right there in the bank where I can transfer it back and forth. Um, so I don't, I don't want to, um, I, I just want it somewhere else. And that's why I would push you. Let's go to an online savings account. And a lot of local banks will give you a separate savings account as well. So if you are fine with it in a local bank, that's, that's cool. For me, I liked that it was a little harder to get to. Um, an online savings account will take two to three days to transfer money from that account to your local account. Um, so we have it automatically transfer money in, but to get money out means I gotta think about it, and that's a good thing. That's not a, hey, I went to the store and I saw this item that I really wanted, and so I just moved the money around and I bought it. It doesn't work that way, uh, and so it can't be spent that way, and that's very helpful. So we have our income and we have our really large expenses handled. The rest of your money, um, this is where almost every financial guru is going to tell you the rest of your money needs to be itemized down to the dollar. Dave Ramsey, all of them, every dollar needs to have a job. That's how uh, one budgeting software will tell you. So that I don't have this random 50 bucks just sitting in the checking account that's not assigned to anything. Every dollar has a category. Dave Ramsey would also say that. And the reason there is that, again, I'm not looking at my budget or my totals and my account and thinking, oh, yeah, there's 100 bucks sitting there. I'm good. Because if it doesn't have an assignment, you forget that you spent that last week. Uh, but when it's assigned to something, I have a $50 eating out budget. I have a $50 clothing budget, whatever it might be. Then you know that it's spent. It's done. It's over. So this is where Dave tells you to go with the envelope system and let's pay cash for everything. So that when the envelope is empty, I know that it's empty, I can't spend any more in that category, we're done. Um, you can definitely go cash base and it's a great place to be because I do, I know the second that that money is out. This is also where you could use a budgeting app or program to help you see when those categories are empty. Uh, and I don't mean just, you know, 
having your checkbook balanced, I mean a budgeting system that you've assigned all those categories, you have to manually enter them too. There are none that just magically filter out all those categories for you. Um, Mint will try, but it, you're still going to have to reassign things. It doesn't always assign them correctly. Um, so some of you guys mentioned last week, um, and I went hunting for others, um, some apps that you liked for budget. So one of them that was mentioned was YNAB, which stands for you need a budget. Uh, YNAB is a free app, but be careful because it requires software uh, on your computer. The app really is just syncing the software. Uh, you might be able to run on just the app. I have not tried, but um, from everything that I was reading and all the reviews that I were reading, was reading on it, it requires the software. The software costs about 60 bucks. It's a one-time expense though, so it's not recurring, but people rave about it. Um, could it be worth the 60 bucks? You know, if it gets your budget in shape, it could. Um, there are definitely some free versions as well. One um, that other folks recommended, and this was just an app, um, it's called Home Budget um, with Sync. And Home Budget with Sync costs $4.99 to buy the app. Uh, and this is completely on your smartphone, doesn't need secondary software, but the sync part is that it's syncing your phone and your husband's phone. So now we're on the same page. Um, if my husband wants to eat out for lunch, he can open it up and he can see how much is actually in the dining out lunch category. Um, just so you have a feel for where each other are. And that's a good thing versus him constantly feeling like you're the bad guy. Um, and that's kind of where I felt when we um, were, my husband was working downtown and I would be the one managing the checkbook and everything and making that phone call. Hey, you know, there's no money. You need to not eat out today. That's a tough phone call to always kind of feel like the bad person on. Now this was also 11 years ago and there weren't smartphones where he could just open it up and see. So somebody had to be the bad guy back then. But nowadays you don't, you can both be on the same page. So that's where the home budget with sync, it's $4.99 uh, one time. Uh, there are other free apps, Mint, um, Wally was one that also had just great reviews. Um, so you can try any of those. All three of them are apps, but just keep in mind that the YNAB does have the secondary software that you would put on the computer for Mac or PC. So we've got something, you can obviously do this on paper too. That's how people did budgets for hundreds of years before computers came around, so definitely can be done. Um, but we've got something to help organize categories, whether you've got envelopes with money in them or a computer telling you how much money is in each category. We need that, we need it set out. And again, down to the dollar. So if you need to have a crazy category that is just, you know, Jenny's um, splurge category, then make that category. Uh, but that way the money's not just sitting there. Um, a, a friend of mine in the blogging world, Christy Jordan from Southern Plate, uh, would have a Pyrex category if her husband let her, um, just because she likes to buy kitchen gadgets and um, Pyrex in particular. So we all have something make a category for it if you need to just make sure that every dollar is accounted for so that I'm not left with this slush money that is too tempting to spend because you will. Um, that's not the goal. Now, as we divide out money, don't forget about saving, tithing, charity, categories that we don't always think about. They need to be factored in almost up top with the recurring bills. Um, almost everybody in financial land is going to tell you that you need to be saving and you need to have a goal of almost saving 15% of your monthly take home pay. That's a big chunk. But if you have no savings at all, we have to start somewhere. Uh, we need a rainy day fund. Um, we need you again, go to go to Dave. Dave's going to tell you we need six months worth of expenses saved up somewhere. Um, that's a, a, a bit steep for most people, but I would definitely try to push you to three if you could do it. Um, the reason, you never know what's coming up. Um, I don't want you two to fall into this category where most of us do and say, well, you know what, this month was really rough, but next month is going to be better. Because guess what? There's no normal month. There is no better month. I would love to tell you next week I will keep my house cleaner. 
Nope, it's still gonna look the exact same way or it looked this week. Next week is still gonna be just as crazy as this week was. It's just how it works always. It doesn't get easier, it just goes, it's life. Um, so we need to deal with this planning now for rainy days, planning now for unexpected expenses. Uh, and thinking as you plan those, what some of those unexpected and, and regular expenses are. So to factor some of those in, just so you're thinking about it, your taxes, uh, deductibles for your health insurance, your car insurance, so that you're good there. Um, vacation, I need to factor that into my budget or I'm not going to take one. And then other things that I can't expect uh, would be repairs, medical bills, vet bills. You just never know what's gonna happen tomorrow, what the dog's gonna choose to eat. And all of a sudden, another $500 is down the drain. Um, so factoring all of that into having some kind of rain day fund extra savings so that you can handle all of those is really important. Um, and then with this one, this is another uh, kind of comparison to budgeting month by month versus budgeting a year out and hoping it all works. Once we create all these categories, we have to adjust them. Nobody sets a perfect budget and then never has to adjust it. And I think that's where a lot of folks get frustrated with budgets because they say, well, I made one, but it didn't work and I just stopped. That's not how budgets work. I make it and then if a bill comes in and I had only budgeted $100 for that bill, but this month the water bill was 120 because you chose to water the grass, you should have just let it die. Um, well, that 20 bucks has to come from somewhere. So I'm gonna look at all the categories that have playroom. Obviously I can't steal from the electricity bill or the car insurance bill, but you've got some categories that aren't necessary in a sense. So if I still have money in the eating out category, then that money is gonna come in to cover the excess in the water bill. Next month, maybe I'm gonna put it right back in eating out because I'm gonna hope we're not gonna water the grass and we're gonna let it die, you know, whatever. But we have to adjust. Uh, we can't just sit back, watch our budget play out, and then at the, the end of the month, beginning of next month, prepare next month's budget. Now we need to kind of be in there. Um, this is why when the envelope is empty in Dave's world, I gotta pay the bill. If the envelope is empty, then I'm taking money from another envelope. Yes, it's gonna make that envelope empty faster, but that's the concept. I still have not gone into money that I didn't have. Uh, I'm still playing with money that is real money, that is really part of our life um, versus spending credit or, um, you know, just going into debt, that's not the goal. So we have to adjust our budget. And this again is a great example when you compare it to the government. The government doesn't adjust a budget. They set a yearly budget, they never meet their yearly budget. Um, it doesn't work, then they come back next year, they make all those categories higher, um, it still doesn't work. We need to adjust a budget every single month, throughout the month as it's going. So don't kick yourself because you have to do that Everybody has to adjust their budget and pull, if if need be, from other categories. And sometimes that pulling is fun. Sometimes that pulling is not painful. If you get a phone call and a friend says, hey, I have tickets to a concert. Do you and your husband want to go? Well, they're free tickets, but I have no more money in the you know babysitting category. Someone's giving me free tickets. I'm going to find that money. I'm going to play around and say, you know what? We don't need to do any new clothing this month. We're gonna steal some money from clothing category so that we can have a date night and pay the babysitter. Um, so you can always play around in happy moments and sad, but hopefully hopefully it'll be more happy if, if you've really got these um, fine-tuned the way they need to be. Um, okay, so let me make sure I've hit everything um, so far as we go through, and then we'll get to questions in just a second. Um, okay, we hit apps, we hit having a budget, yes, I think we're good. Um, so with savings, I mentioned that I want you to have, you know, a separate savings account for your long-term out bills, but I would encourage you to go ahead and have a separate savings account for your rainy day and long-term savings as well. So whether you create two online savings accounts, lots of places are going to let you have, have multiple this is again us, we're at Capital One, so we have one that's an escrow and one that's a long-term rainy day savings account. Um, you need to make the savings a bill. So just like we automatically took out that escrow money for the insurance payments and the tax payments, we need to automatically take out our savings too. Off the top, it's done, savings is out. 
yes, if horrible things happen, I can go back into that savings and get the money, but I didn't do it after the fact. I didn't do it at the end of the month based on the $10 that was left. I did it before all of the uh, non-necessary expenses. So I pay the electricity of the water. I did it all with all of those other bills because you're much more likely to put it aside and not touch it by doing it first. Um, so automatic deductions, use bill pay from the bank to do these or transfer out so that you're kind of set by having this money put aside. Um, and then one other thing that I wanted to mention uh, in terms of paying in cash base, and this is really kind of um, been something that I've been chatting about this week with folks that um, help me on the back end of Southern Savers as we see all of the deals that have popped up on raise.com. So raise is offering you know, a $5 credit when you sign up um, for their account and they sell gift cards. Well, I can hop on there and I was even sharing this with my husband. They've got tractor supply gift cards, for instance. This is where a chunk of our money goes having horses and chickens and dogs and cats. You have to have an animal budget to handle all of this. Um, so I can hop onto Raise. I can buy a tractor supply gift card. If my total budget for the month to feed all of these animals is $100, let's say, um, I can buy a $100 tractor supply gift card but only pay 80 bucks for it on Raise because they sell discounted gift cards. It's still a $100 gift card. I can still walk in a tractor supply. I still have $100 to spend in tractor supply, but I only spent $80 for that money. Um, so that would be one that I would encourage you to look at uh, if you've got some places that you know that you spend regular money at. So for, I mean, I cannot buy chicken feed in Publix. I know that I'm going to Tractor Supply to buy these items, but I might as well be grabbing some of those gift cards at a discount uh, and then turning around So and using them in the store but I just stretched my dollars even further. So I spent 80, but now I've got $100 to spend in the store. And I will stick in um, a link um, for raise here in a second. I have to go and grab it. So you need to get the $5 credit if you haven't seen this deal yet. Um, you have to go through someone's referral link. So you can actually log in and create an account and then you can share it with friends as well. Um, and you, uh, we'll get a $5, I think, um, bonus for sharing it with friends. Um, so I'm going to stick mine in there, and you're welcome to use it or not use it. It doesn't matter. Um, but you can at least hop in there and see what I mean, uh, and you'll get a $5 credit for creating your account. So you can see what I mean by saying that if I'm going to spend $100 at Tractor Supply this month, well, I start here with my my true money and I turn it into gift cards um, and if I were to head to Tractor Supply right now, Tractor Supply gift cards on raise.com are 10% off, um, meaning I could get, uh, they have like a $125 gift card, I'm going to pay $112 for it and there's also a coupon code, um, This is I should have looked this one up earlier but I, I'm pretty sure the coupon code is fall5 that gets you another $5 off. So when you first sign up, that's $10 off your first gift card. I think actually fall five is $5 off of a $50 purchase. Um, but if I were to grab a $60 gift card, I just got $10 off of that by using those two together. Um, I wouldn't recommend going in and doing this for everything in your budget, but if things are super tight, this is stretching your budget. This is just stretched, you know, the pet, chicken budget by 10% by getting a gift card and using a an tractor supply. So it's kind of like a cash envelope slash gift card system if that's where you wanted to go with it, just to kind of throw that out there as a, another way to save. Now, I'm gonna back up and jump into everybody's questions. Um, so Brady's asking, good time to buy appliances. Um, because you hear that new models come out, so they reduce the old models. We finally found a home. Um, exciting, Brady, congratulations. Um, in terms of best time to buy appliances, the fall can be. We have seen some good deals around Labor Day. Labor Day is over. Um, you will see some around Black Friday. In terms of the best appliance deals, Brady, it's not necessarily waiting for sales. 
And I don't know what you're looking for or whether you have a particular model that your heart is set on, but in all of our appliance purchasing, we have always gone for the scratch and dent or floor models and gotten amazing deals off of the regular price. And scratch and dent doesn't always mean that it's got a huge scratch down the front. Um, most of them you would never even know that it was a scratch and dent, but a lot of times because it's been returned, it's an automatic 30% or even more off of the regular price. So we have a dryer. It doesn't match the washer, but it was returned because a lady bought them in a set. She didn't like the washer, so she returned the dryer. There was nothing wrong with the dryer. It was just returned. Well, we're going to get a chunk off of it by doing that. Um, so that's where I would encourage you to go with appliances and not necessarily even, you know, this is a, I just check back. So you find out what Lowe's in town or what Home Depot in town has the most selection. And the best question to ask them, Brady, is um, most of the stores have one truck. So in our area, for instance, Columbia has, I think we have three Lowe's. We may have more than that. I know we have four now. We have four Lowe's in the Columbia area. We only really have one delivery truck and they pick up the orders for those stores and they go and install. But then when they come back with scratch and dent models or something happened during delivery, they tend to return all of them to, this, to one location. So you need to ask your Lowe's and your Home Depot or Sears what locations get most of the scratch and dents. And this is huge because for me it meant leaving the normal Lowe's and Home Depot that I normally went to, heading to one that was about 20 minutes away. And the difference was one little aisle of scratch and dent at our normal Lowe's versus like three aisles of scratch and dent at a different one 20 minutes away. And multiple aisles mean lots of choice for you in terms of what you're looking for or how bad the scratch and dent is. Obviously, I don't want a dishwasher that has no racks in it. I don't want to have to rebuild the dishwasher. Um, but that's where you get to pick and choose what you want. So that's what I would encourage you to do. If you're looking for sales, we will see them. I would actually say you're going to see bigger sales around Black Friday um, than you are right now because right now is nothing. Right now is we're kind of sitting here twiddling our thumbs. Um, most of our home improvement stores are not trying to push appliances. They're trying to push all the stuff that's in the front of the store right now. So they need grills out of the way, lawnmowers out of the way, all of that stuff. This is the time of year to grab anything, patio furniture, all of the stuff that you see the minute you walk into Lowe's and Home Depot, they need that gone because all of that is about to be Christmas. Um, so that's really what they're pushing a lot of um, versus the back of the store the back of the store can kind of hang there for all they care right now. And then we'll see some deals on Black Friday. Um, but maybe you can find something in Scratch and Dent Land. Um, um, and so, Brady, you had another question further down. So, yes, the Labor Day sales are over. Will we see them again? Yes, but again, it's going to be Black Friday. Um, in terms of looking for front loaders, I don't, uh, you know, I, I don't know what the going prices are going to be from week to week, but your best prices are going to be Black Friday and Cyber Monday or going for scratch and dents. So Judy has a Publix question about rain checks. Do stores such as Publix and CVS ever issue rain checks for their store coupons? Like if I want to use a high value coupon for an item that's not on sale, but the store runs out of the item. Um, so Publix, since you mentioned Publix and CVS, Publix will always take a store coupon even after it has expired if you still have it. Uh, and usually they'll tell you, yes, we'll still take it as long as it's in the system, but they're usually in the system for a little while. Um, so just ask. It's never a yes, we'll definitely take this. It's not something that's set in stone, but I've never seen a store that said no either. So a really great example this week at Publix. Uh, in the new grocery flyer that came out on Saturday, there are buy one, get one coupons for Special K. There is also a Special K rebate. And this is a, in a deal post that's going to go up tomorrow morning on Southern Savers because I schedule things and I don't get on the computer at 7.30 in the morning. Um, there's a $10 rebate when you purchase five Special K products. And we have a buy one, get one store coupon. So Special K crackers are going to be sold out for the next two weeks. They're not gonna come back in stock because there's a store buy one, get one coupon. 
and there's a $10 mail-in rebate, and there are manufacturer's coupons, it makes Special K crackers completely free after the rebate. Um, the rebate hangs around another week after the store coupon expires, so that's where you would want to get a rain check. I want to grab the rain check now. Publix, has a, in general, has a policy that as long as a rain check, or sorry, as long as a coupon was good the day the rain check was written, you may continue to use that coupon until the rain check expires. So you're fine. The rain check will be a 30-day rain check. That's going to extend your two-week-long store coupon really for two more weeks, if you think about it. So getting rain checks in Publix works amazingly well with coupons as a whole. Um, my tip there would be that you ask them to staple any coupons you have to the rain check because you're going to get home and you're going to forget that they go together and then you're going to throw the coupons away. So don't do that. Um, they have a stapler right there, customer service. Just say, you know what, I wanted to buy Special K crackers. You don't have any more. Uh, can I get a rain check? They hand it to you, and you just go ahead and say, can you staple these coupons to it? And they'll do that right then. They won't even look at you funny. CBS, they issue rain checks. Uh, their rain checks do print the rewards after the fact, which is great. They do not have a policy of taking expired manufacturer's coupons, period. They don't take them. But most stores will take an expired store coupon after the fact. Again, it's going to be on an asking, do you mind taking this basis? But I've never met a CVS that wouldn't take an expired extra care buck and wouldn't take an expired coupon. They may have to push them through, but most will. So always ask um, is just kind of a great rule of thumb with anything. Um, Okay, um, so that's everyone's questions. And Brady, I don't know if you were trying to ask a question or if you were really excited about something, um, but all I got was an exclamation mark uh, and a slash. So um, if you have any other questions, feel free to stick them in. I'm gonna look back over my notes really quick and make sure that I didn't miss anything. I really did try to prep for you guys though, uh, as much as I could in terms of budgeting, um, because everybody's different. We all have different priorities. We need to all be on the same page. I guess I didn't really say that in the beginning, but when you sit down to set a budget, it can't just be one person. If you're married, you need to both sit down um, and be planning this budget out. So this is a date night. This is a once a month. This also isn't happening on the second of the month. It needs to happen a couple days before the end of the month. So we're reassessing where we, where we fell this month so that we can plan better for next month. Uh, and if you're just getting started on budgeting, um, I pulled a couple resources that I can share them faster. Dave Ramsey has a download um, that you can, anybody can use. Um, so I would start there and here's a link to his free download. It's very long and crazy, but it will work just by you clicking through it. Uh, it's a free basic, how do you, how do you budget? How do you get it to work? Um, let's see. Um, so if you're just getting started, you can try that or go app. If you're not a paper person, let's go software or app. Um, the YNAB is good software just from researching and reviewing and looking at it. But the fun part about that one is that they have a free 34 day trial so that you can assess how you did at the end of the month. 30 day trial wouldn't get you all the way there. I love that. Um, so that one lets you play with it at least for the first month. You can fully see how this is working. Maybe you go paper after that. Maybe you don't mess with it uh, and pay the 60 bucks for the software, but we let it figure out all of our, help us figure out all our categories and then we go paper from here on um, or using Quicken, uh, which would be the old Intuit system. We talked a lot about Quicken last week with TurboTax as we talked taxes. Um, or some of the other free softwares, um, just so you're getting started. Now, Tawana, just to share with everyone, says, I noticed CVS is putting a lot of things at 75% off right now to make room for gifts. Uh, we're seeing that even Target's got, I think their patio and whatnot is down to 40% right now. Back to school in some areas is at 90% and others is still at 70. Um, so just watching uh, for all of those discounts because most of these stores really they have their they have two holidays coming up one of them we don't do in our house um, but 
The end of October holiday is huge. Uh, in most stores, they've already got all of that set up and ready to go, and then they will be doubled in with Christmas. So you're going to walk in and not know what time of the year it is because we still have all of the ghosts and goblins and Christmas trees up on the next aisle over. Um, but they are. They're trying to prep for a lot of things in this last fourth quarter, and part of that is that they want to try to get their budgets met, and they're hoping that both of those holidays can do it for them. Um, so using that as a really great way for us to help them get rid of the things that they need off out of their way and off their shelves is a great way to save. Um, so CVS, it's all of the summer gear, all of back to school, um, big discounts, and we're going to even see some fall decor come in, last for about three weeks, and then go out. Um, that's the fun part of CVS. They change holidays quick, so watching them for their clearances can be really good finds. Uh, and then stocking it away. If you don't have a gift closet somewhere, you're missing out. Um, you need to be stocking away all year long to where when Christmas comes, you don't really have anything left to buy. You've been slowly buying all year or birthdays come. My kids get invited to a birthday party. That isn't a stressor. We just go to the closet and say, okay, well, how old is the person that you're going to the party for? Because we have something uh, to match all ages. While we're on the clearance subject as well, one more big clearance to just put on your calendar now is Target's toy clearance that happens after Christmas. It's always January 7th through the 10th. Um, so watch for those dates. It'll go 30% and then really, really fast go to 70. The day it goes to 70, it gets wiped out. Um, so you just need to be kind of in and out of Target those three days so that you're ready for those moments because it makes for really good prices. Uh, and that's where I do most of my Christmas shopping and birthday shopping for the next year is January Target toy clearance sales. So just so you're watching for that one. Okay. Um, Judy says, I noticed soups on sale again. Yes, September 1st is the magic soup day. As soon as September 1st hits, we see coupons, we see sales on everything. Are the prices now good stock up prices or do you think we'll see lower in the coming months? I'm about to finish my huge stockpile of soups from last year. I'm proud of you for making it through the summer soup glut. Um, we don't see soup on sale from May 1st until September 1st. So anyone that doesn't know that, if you are a soup lover, then you need to go crazy in March and April because it's a long stretch from May until September. Um, so with soups, we are seeing really good prices. Soups, broth, they're all on sale. We got free broth starting um, Wednesday at Publix, which is fun. Uh, will we see lower? Possibly here and there. That is totally going to depend on the coupons coming out. But the sales that you're seeing right now are the best sales that we'll see. So my personal plan with groceries is that if the sale is a great sale, coupon or not, now's a good time to grab it because I'm not going to see that great sale again for about – four to six weeks. And soup is a little closer than other products because I've got Campbell's and Progresso and Campbell's has 97 different types. Um, so we see some type of soup on sale every single week, but I still want to get, if it's something we'll use, I want to go ahead and grab it when it's buy one, get one or the condensed soups are on sale for a dollar a piece, whether I have a coupon or not, or go ahead and use the coupon I have now. Yes, I may get a higher value coupon come October or November, but let's go ahead and start grabbing some now. Um, and then when we see the higher value coupons, grab more, but don't hold off at this point. Um, those buy one, get one sales are still great sales. So we're seeing Progresso buy one, get one right now. Campbell's Condensed is a dollar a can at Publix. Um, and then we you know, you'll see some others that pop in as well with the other Campbell's brands, the Chunkies and the Home Styles will go buy and get one. I'm not going to see the condensed soups go buy and get one. But we might see them go as low as 75 cents a can before coupons. Dollar is usually still a great jump in price because during the summer when those soups aren't on sale, they try to charge $1.75 for one can of condensed, you know, old school Campbell's soup. So grabbing it for a dollar sounds like a steal compared to a dollar seventy-five during the summer. Can I use a Publix e-coupon with Saving Star? Yes, Saving Star Elizabeth is really um, it's really a rebate. It's not um, it's not coming off of the register. It's coming off after the fact. So to use Saving Star in Publix, first off, for anyone that is not familiar with Saving Star. 
we have to get, and it's kind of strange, you need to get the you promise key tag from your store. You can ask the cashier or someone at customer service, I need the you promise card. And then I head to savingstar.com and I register the you promise card. They're actually owned by the same company. That's why they're, they're overlapping and using the same card. So I have the you promise card. I'm now set up to run saving star. I scan that you promise card at checkout but that does not make the Saving Star coupons come off. Instead, I use all my Publix e-coupons or all my manufacturer coupons. I can use those with Saving Star as well. And then Saving Star really gets from Publix, what did she buy? Publix tells her what I bought, and within 24 to 48 hours, I will get the money back in my Saving Star account. So it's really, it's an after the fact, it's a, it's a rebate off of your total purchase um, because you bought the participating items. So yes, you can use them at the register on top of Publix e-coupons or manufacturer's coupons. And then also don't forget about all the apps because I can use those on top of Saving Star as well. So if I had a coupon that had Saving Star and an Ibotta and a Checkout 51, I can do that. I can buy however many the coupons required, use the manufacturer's coupon in the store, use Saving Star, use Ibotta, use Checkout if you want, all on the same purchase. That's the really fun part about all these apps um, is that they just all keep adding up because they're separate companies. Do we know when the next Kroger mega event will be? So Kroger's running a basically a house brand mega event right now. Um, the next big mega event, they tend to run them every four weeks, Brady. So they take, they run them for two weeks and then they take a couple weeks off and then they run them for two weeks. Um, it doesn't always mean that the next one around is a big one, but there will usually be one every four weeks. Um, I, my guess will be that the next one around is going to be a tinier one. It's going to be a five when you, five dollars when you buy five or four dollars when you buy four and it's going to be a cleaning and household. That's typically what we see in the fall. Um, and then we'll see another larger, like hundreds of items mega event like we just saw, um, probably in about six to eight weeks. Um, but that would be the cycle that I would get in the habit of. So it's a super huge mega event followed by tiny mega events, couple tinies, and then a super huge followed by a couple tinies. Okay. Um, when I try to add deals to Saving Star, many say that they're already on another app or something like that. So Vic, are you um, are you using uh, um, Plenty by any chance? Because Plenty, the Plenty system overlaps with Saving Star. They're the biggest one that has overlap. So if I'm loading a coupon from Plenty.com or through the Plenty app, then I can't actually overlap it with Saving Star. It's not going to let me load it in multiple places. Um, that would be my first guess. If you're not using Plenty, then um, I would ask maybe you stick in chat some of the apps that you do regularly use, and we can kind of figure out who's overlapping. Um, but all the other mobile apps, so Checkout 51, uh, Ibotta, MobiSave, those do not have any overlap with Saving Star. Plenty and You Promise overlap. Now, You Promise is Saving Star. They're the same company. So I can't use both there either. So if you were, for some reason, using the You Promise college savings side, I would just encourage you to stop loading e coupons on You Promise and just switch to Saving Star. It's the same system. Saving Star has more coupons than You Promise does. Um, but Saving Star, I get my money back now versus you promise I get my money back when my kids go to college. I would just prefer the money now. It helps to feed them now versus helping to buy them paper later because it's not going to buy a book. Um, so that would be my guess as to what's overlapping for you. Um, how long does it take to become a, mo a member with Moby Save? I registered in July. Elizabeth, for me, I went through my email um, probably a month ago and just typed in Moby Save to see, you know, how often, how long did it take from the time I got the you're on the waiting list till the you're approved email, and it was right at four weeks. Um, so, if you registered in July, you're probably a little past that. But I will say, in late June, early July is when like I added Moby Save to the Southern Savers database. They got a lot of up tick from a lot of different bloggers all starting to promote their offers and they're probably having to handle that traffic as well. So it might be a little longer, but they will let you in. And the fun part about the delay is that once you're in, the offers are really great and they do last versus like Snap by Groupon. 
It's one of the most annoying apps because you'll head into the store to buy a deal and by the time you get out of the store, the deal doesn't exist anymore. You don't want that frustration. So if MobiSave is gonna have a $2 off Tide coupon, I know when I buy the Tide that the coupon is still gonna be there. Um, so just kind of wait out, you will get in. Hopefully it'll be soon if it's already been past that four week mark. Um, and since we've been talking apps a lot, I will put in chat just all the ones that I've been mentioning. Um, the main ones that I use are MobiSave, Checkout51, um, Saving Star, and Ibotta. Um, it makes me second guess. I'll pull up my phone just to make sure. I have them all in a little folder. My husband laughs at me, but everything has to be in a little folder. I can't handle lots and lots of icons everywhere. Um, so those are the four, yeah, those are the four main ones that I use that work anywhere. Um, and then, of course, you still have Target Cartwheel and various store-specific apps. But those four are good, and I still check out 51, 51 wrong, it appears. Leave the A out. Um, but those four are going to be good at tons of stores and have tons of coupons in them. Checkout 51 was just purchased by um, SmartSource. Uh, so that should be exciting. We should see a lot more coupons coming out in their system as well. They already have a good number. They're one of my favorites because they re refresh every single week. Uh, and then you're set to use them again if they come back or a whole new batch if they don't come back. Um, so Rosalie asked, can we do a QA and a on the savings tracker? We can, Rosalie, and we're actually pushing out a new feature for it this week. A lot of folks have asked for a way to track apps separately, so there will be a new line um, to be able to enter just your app savings so that you can kind of keep tabs on how much um, that is, since a lot of us, myself included, don't factor that into total spent this week since I don't get that money back this week. Um, so we can do that just to kind of, kind of have a Q&A on just Southern Savers features, even not just the savings tracker, but the item search and various things that are there. Um, Sam's Club is offering a one-year membership for new and expecting moms. Has anyone else heard of this deal, and is there anything worth getting at Sam's? I saw that today, Judy. I'm going to warn anyone that wants to head in and, or call in and get that. The wait times are crazy, and I do expect Sam's to probably by the end of today or tomorrow put their foot down. So the way that this deal was originally um, made was that Sam's did a mailer out to new and expected moms that somehow they got a mailing list for. Uh, and then you took that mailer into the store and you got your free membership. The phone number uh, helpline that folks are kind of quoting is, you know, you lost your card or you shared it with a friend and your friend wants it. But really what's happening is that half of America wants it. Well, Sam's doesn't really have a way to know that you had a baby or that you have a baby that's within the last year. So I kind of expect them to, to say no on all of this. But if, if, even if you don't get this particular deal, we see deals on Sam's all the time that cost nothing after gift cards and freebies. So there are still plenty of ways to get a membership for maybe five bucks out of pocket. The real question though is your second question, which is, is there anything worth getting at Sam's? And I'm gonna say probably not. Um, if you were to go through Sam's, which you can get just a visitor's pass and walk through, you're gonna notice if you do price out, like price per ounce, price per serving, that you're gonna get much better prices in the grocery store, especially if you're couponing. So an example would be cereal. I am never gonna pay more than a dollar for a box of cereal in the grocery store. Sam's is gonna take three boxes of cereal, they're gonna put them together in a big box, and they're gonna charge eight to nine bucks for those three boxes of cereal. So they're coming out to $3 a box. Yes, that is cheaper than the grocery store full price, but that's not even touching, like grocery store half price. Buy one, get one sales would still be less than $3 a box. But then I have coupons. So they're not gonna get down to a box of three cereals for three bucks. It's just not gonna happen. Um, so most everything in Sam's, I am going to get cheaper somewhere else. There are some key things in Sam's that I'm not gonna get cheaper other places, but, I'm gonna get about the same price in the grocery store and it's not gonna factor in having to go to Sam's and make a separate purchase, having to store a ton of it in a huge, huge bag or paying the membership if you don't get a deal. Um, so some of those items that are the same as grocery store sale prices, cheese, eggs, milk, 
meat. A lot of folks like to buy their meat in bulk from Sam's, but I can get the same prices with grocery store sales. Um, though I would push you to even grab your meat, not in a grocery store at all, but buying in bulk from someone like Zacon Foods, or if you um, have a restaurant supply store, that's where we grab most of our meat. Um, so, which for us is the U.S. Foods Chef Store, lots of different restaurant supply stores in town. Uh, Zacon, I can get you know 80-20 ground beef, 80% um, 80 lean, 20% fat ground beef. It's $2.99 a pound right now. You can't get ground beef for $2.99 a pound in any grocery store. Um, that's a good price, and there's no membership fee required to do that. So most of the deals in Sam's, I'm going to get better somewhere else or equal. And in the end, it just doesn't pay for a membership or having to go to another store to do it all. Uh, paper goods is the last one that a lot of folks go to Sam's for. If you want the biggest package of paper towels and toilet paper that God ever made. But most of those deals, I'm going to get in the drugstore. CBS has great toilet paper and paper towel deals where I can get a six-pack of paper towels, 12 packs of toilet paper, and pay maybe $3.50 to $4 a pack. In Sam's, I'm going to get a 16-roll pack of paper towels but it's going to cost me about 15 to 16 bucks. Um, so I have a better deal in CVS. Um, to move on, Marianne says, I just got a new CVS card that I didn't ask for. Is this part of their plan since they haven't been so active with deals lately? Um, so Marianne, my question with your new CVS card is what color is it? So if you just got a white CVS card in the mail, you didn't ask for it, it just showed up randomly, and it's a white CVS card, uh, that's a fun moment. The white CVS card is given to you based on who is your health insurance provider, and it gives you 20% off of CVS house brand healthcare-related items forever, as long as you have a white card. You could even cancel the health insurance, you still have a white card. Uh, so enjoy your white card, savor it, cherish it. Um, don't not, you want to stop using the red and start using the white. If they sent you another random red card, there's not really a need to switch. Um, my guess is that they either somehow got their wires crossed and thought you needed one. Maybe you didn't go in there recently and they decided that you lost it. They're giving you benefit of the doubt. Um, but if you have another red card that wouldn't make much sense, just go ahead and stick with the one that you have now unless you want to switch and try to be a new customer. They aren't giving coupons out to anybody, so switching to try to get your coupons to replenish like we used to do, probably not going to do any good. Um, but if it's a white card, then I don't know, go out for an exciting uh, night on the town uh, because getting those is really tricky. Nobody knows how they come or how to trigger them. You can call your health insurance company. They won't know what you're talking about. You can call CVS. They won't know what you're talking about. All of a sudden, this white card just shows up in the mail. Um, so for those of us who've gotten it, just know that you're special, uh, if that helps. Uh, and the fun part with that, if you do ever get one of those, is that you can use it on top of extra care buck deals. So if CVS runs an extra care buck where you buy $20 worth of house brands and you get a $10 extra care buck, on, on healthcare related house brands, vitamins, whatever, I can go in, I can buy those vitamins, I'm gonna get 20% off of them, I'm still gonna get the $10 extra care buck, so it makes for even better deals in this store. Um, so Vic asks, is Moby Save the same as Moby Save Refund? Um, uh, you're making me question it. My app is just Moby Save. I don't think that they've changed their name, um, so let me pull up the app store and see uh, what I can find. Um, and as I, as I pull it up, because my phone is usually slow, um, it would help if I typed it right too. Um, so the next question was Barbara's and that's Zacon beef. Is it local or is it all over? So Zacon is all over. Um, and I don't, Judy answered you with going to Zacon.com. I don't know whether it's Zacon or ZaconFoods.com, but either one, you can log in, put in your zip code, and it's going to show you all the locations all over the country. There are tons. In my area, there are probably 10 different choices for drop sites. A lot of them are, are church parking lots. And then you'll see all the things that they're selling. So I can get boneless, skinless chicken breasts. They're in 40-pound boxes, fresh, never frozen. I think they're like $1.89 a pound. Um, they have... 97% lean ground beef that is $3.99 a pound. 
Then they have the 80-20 that's $2.99 a pound. They sell hams. They sell bacon. They sell a ton of stuff. It's all bulk. It's all fresh, not frozen. So you want to come home and get out all the Ziploc bags, or for us, we get out the vacuum sealers and we kind of go to town just putting it all up in its individual packages. It's easy to split with friends because of that too. So you buy a 40 pound box of chicken, you don't need 40 pounds, but it's not frozen. So we can easily sit there and you can take half and they can take half without having to thaw anything out or, or cut open thawed bags. Uh, it's a little messy, but it doesn't take much time at all. And it is a huge savings to do. So I would encourage you to look into it. Um, now for me in the app store, uh, Vic, I have two, I only really have one option for MobiSave. Um, Groupon is trying to sneak in below that. But it's just called MobiSave Rebates, I guess, is what they're going for. It, it is MobiSave. They've just stuck in the name Rebates so that they can try to get a little more SEO on the name. Um, but it's still MobiSave. So if that's what you're seeing, then you're in the right app. Um, just be ready, Vic, because when you sign in, it's going to take as, um, what was that? Judy, okay, I, names are gone now. Um, as someone was saying, that it, it takes a chunk of time to get approved through MobiSave. So um, just four to six weeks, if not longer than that. Um, but you still have to go ahead and get the account and try to get on the waiting list so that you can get in at some point. And I'll confess, I don't keep apps around that I'm not using. So for me, I downloaded the app, I applied for the account. And then I took the app off my phone until I got the email that I had been approved. Um, and that's just, I don't like apps that I'm not using because I don't really want you to, I don't know, secretly be tracking me or anything crazy like that. Who knows if they can even do it in the first place. Um, but you can do that if you want. So download it, sign up, nix it, and then you'll get an email as soon as you get off the wait list and you can get the app and be ready to go again. Okay, um, well, we're at our 9.30 mark, and we got to some good questions, so I hope um, that budgeting was helpful, um, as it was a topic we haven't covered in the past, and what we're going to do, just so none of you miss it, because um, I know a lot of you are here every week, and I love that. I like that I get to know folks uh, after even just a few uh, hangouts. Uh, we are not going to have a hangout next Monday. Um, my daughter has a follow-up in Atlanta that day, so it just makes for a really long day for us. Um, so no hangout next week, but we will have a hangout the following Monday. Um, no breaks after this one um, for a little while. So we're going to take next Monday night off, and then I'll see you all back on, to quickly pull up a calendar, uh, it's in October this is the next one. Um, so just looking, at, yes, so all back here on October 5th at 8.30. And we can definitely do Southern Savers features and just questions for other things that folks have going over uh, the savings tracker and item search and whatnot. Um, so if you have questions before then, feel free to shoot me an email, jenny at southernsavers.com, or I will see you in two weeks. Y'all have a good night.